Tark. Chris! You held the future of a people in your hands! How dare you take our prince from us! How dare you parade around this abomination! Silence your blasphemous tongue, Voss! Voss! Give Kartav Kim crush! What? Stand down! The true heir has spoken! No. It can't be. Orpheus, my prince, what's become of you? The grand design must be ended. A sacrifice had to be made. The duty fell to me. I am not long for this world, or any other. What of Vlakith? What of our liberty? You underestimate your own people. Their imaginations have kept the name Orpheus alive for millennia. Bring them my message. Tell them my fate. Some will doubt. Some will mock. But some will listen. And the spark will be lit. Find your nerve, my friend. Today, we strike at the brain. This champion holds the key to the Grand Design's end. Answer to him as you would to me. Your Majesty. I have spoken. As you wish. I stand at the ready. Your friendship. Your constancy. When I fell to despair, they elated me. Thank you, my friend. Shavazai. Shavazai. Now, to the Netherbrain. Let it be the first victim in the war for the skies. We have lost much already. And we will lose more before the day is out. But even when the last soul falls, Baldur's Gate will stand. For Baldur's Gate is more than just a city. It is more than a place of opportunity for those of mercantile spirit. More than a place of refuge for those who are lost. More than a home for friends, loved ones, and adventuring souls. Baldur's Gate is a place where anyone can find what they need, if they're just willing to fight for it. Today, Baldur's Gate needs us. Today, we fight for... You're late, friend. This is the one you spoke of. The very same. The champion we've been waiting for. The one who will save Baldur's Gate from ruin. The Fist examines your illithid ally with suspicion. He was not expecting the savior of Baldur's Gate to be accompanied by a mind flare. Appearances may change, but they do not mask the one within. This one, I know. Observe with whom it traveleth, friends. This mind flare will fight with thee. It will save thy city and thy lives. The fist eyes your lithid ally with suspicion, softening to curiosity. His hostility melting at the recognition that there's more behind those eyes than malice. My steel is yours, and I'm not alone. You helped me once. I figured it's time I paid you back. With magic. I'm better at crafting steel than wielding it. Your friend here is armored and potion-fueled and ready for battle. I have marshaled the best the Flaming Fist has to offer. We will fight to the last. You've unexpected friends. <laughs> but my debt to you still stands. The Iron Hand Gnome's firepower is yours to command. Just show us where it's needed. The Moon Maiden's silver light is a shield in dark times. Today, it is mine to wield. And I hold her sword. Whatever strength I have to lend, I will lend it. I will make my city proud again. Did you think I was gonna let you have 
all the fun. Ma looks out for her friends. Mind flyers included. And she'll have your back. Trust me. You can count on me, little rabbit. And your squiddy friend. I thirst for the hunt. I made some improvements to Ramazes' arcane artillery. Give the word and the sky falls on any who stand in your way. I'm in the mood to crack some skulls after that fuckery in the Temple of Baal. The City Watch will be glad to oblige me. Not sure what I have to offer a mind flare, if I'm honest. But I hope my words of encouragement and reassurance will strengthen your uh, resolve. The journey has been brutal. But I stand here a Hell Rider once more. And I would die a proud man if I died this day. I want my city back. And I've brought the toughest bastards from the Guild to get the job done. My people have never hunted a monster this large. They are eager to join the fray. All the strength of the lands we healed flows through me. And from me to you. And whatever company you keep. Nature's servant awaits. Glad to have you with us. And not a moment too soon. The air is thick with anticipation. All eyes are on you. They're expecting a speech. Something to stir their hearts and put fire in their bellies for the fight ahead. Many of you know my name. Few of you know my face. This is as it should be. I am not a hero. I am a servant. Of nature. Of balance. Of life. At this moment, I serve all of you. I buried my husband, Khalid, a hundred years ago. That wound still bleeds. While I draw breath, I will not let this city bleed. Well said. We'll prepare ourselves. We'll be ready when you call upon us. Baldurin's grace be with you. Fall back! Fall back! Matthew! Leave him be! We have to keep running! Mind Flayer! Mind Flayer! It's over. He's frightened of your illithid ally, but the very fact it hasn't killed him on sight gives him reason to pause. Can the rumors be true? Is this really the Mind Flayer who could save the city? You see his mind racing through its options, finding only one. Against all his better judgment, it's you and your Mind Flayer. Remarkable. Never in all my life did I think to fight alongside a mind flare. Oh. We go back in there, we die, we flee, we last half a day at best. Shit! If this is it, then God damn it, let's make it count. City Watch, with me! We'll follow you to our last breaths. above the city now, far away from any innocence. I can end this now. Stop the absolute and spare the city. The stage is set for my final act. Mistra's bidding and the redemption that lies beyond. You brought me right where I need to be. 
I have no right to ask more of you. It's time I spirited you to safety. For this is a fate I must face alone. I'm sure such an outcome is possible, but why risk it? If we ascend there and try to fight the good fight, well, there are no guarantees. But this way, we'll know the matter is done and we'll know exactly what it shall cost. Me. And me alone. It's now or never. Always another way, yes. But not necessarily a better way. Please. For too long, I've lived in fear of taking a host of innocents with me when I expired. Now at least I can be assured my demise will be saving them instead. If you're mistaken, this could be the end of everything. We'll be failing right at the last hurdle. But... I only made it this far thanks to you. Who am I to question such sterling guidance now? Mistra won't be pleased. But perhaps trying to please the gods is a fool's errand. Lead on, then. I shall stay my hand as long as I can. But if the tide of battle turns against us, remember I have the means to bring a swift end to this. It is the crown of Carsus, the site of power, the site of domination. Looks like that crown could use some nether stones. These things were ever going to work. It's now. from my dreams. I know you. I know everything about you. Your thoughts. Your feelings. Your weaknesses. And so do they. The brain is weakened. This is our chance. Even bound, its will is stronger than anything you've ever felt. The chains shake, threatening to break at any moment. It's vulnerable, but not defeated. Use the portal. We will bring it down together. Subdued. Spare me. Join 
me. Wield me. Become absolute! And thus, I honor my mother's legacy. The grand design, once again, ended by my line. The brain is on the cusp of its final thought, and it's taking all of Orpheus's strength to keep it there. An opportunity, perhaps. My master, I must obey. I must. Hopes, nightmares, and the screams of legions upon legions of unborn elithids. The pain rips through you, obliterating all thought, all feeling. Your tadpole burns in your brain. Silence. For the first time in a long time, your thoughts are entirely your own. And then, gravity. Everything you did, everything you sacrificed, it was worth it for this.
can't feel the tadpole. It's gone. We're free! My powers, they're draining. Just like Mazora said they would. A small price to pay in the grand scheme of things. Fucking hell. It's over. The parasite. It's withered. Dead along with the nether brain. I am cleansed. I will never be a filthy geish. Only mild offense intended, of course. You did the unthinkable. And I'm grateful for it. Even when my time in the prism stretched out like eternity, when escape seemed impossible, I never lost hope. I knew that my destiny was to liberate my people, to return to them triumphant. I was wrong. It seems I can only fulfill one part of my destiny. My people will be liberated, but I cannot return to them. Not like this. You helped me destroy that abomination. Now help me destroy myself. You must kill me. But first, Lazel, I need your promise. Carry my hope. Carry my burden. Call my dragons, Kulos and Kuthos and ride to the Astral Sea. Destroy Vlakith. Release our people. Be our future and our legacy. Duty. All my life, I've traveled in its slipstream, not once questioning its path. In its service, I came here, and now, I will carry your hope, Prince Orpheus, and I will carry your burden. But to that burden I must add my own, the loss of those I leave behind. Lach crashed, Macvleck. So be it. Now, give me my freedom from this form. Yes, but for how long? My mind screams. It will never stop until it has slipped away from me entirely. I will not be Gake. I did what I did to save my people. The rest is up to them. Someone else must rise within the ranks to lead the revolution against Vlakith. Give me my freedom from this form. Release my soul to the Astral Seas, while I still have one to call my own. in our slates. You will be called Mlagir, Liberator. Now 
Well, there's a sight to see. Not that I'll miss them. <laughs> With the Githyanki gone, there's nothing left but the silence of the city. Smoldering, waiting to be rebuilt. But it seems that Gale's mind is elsewhere. The crown. It's somewhere in the Giontha. If I salvage the stones, I can reforge it. And once I have, I'll return it to Mistra. She'll cure me of my affliction. And I'll finally be free. And a more deserving one this time around. If this adventure has taught me anything, is that there are things in this world far more valuable than power. Besides, I'm growing quite fond of this merry band of ours, and I'd quite like to see what happens to it. I'm sure Mistra will summon me soon enough, but until then, I propose we celebrate our victory the mortal way, with a drink in our hands and reckless abandon in our hearts. Ah, that might be the smartest thing you've ever said, Gail. What do you think? Time for a quick one? Before the work begins again? Let's not forget the wine. I want to flush out my brain, just to be completely sure the tadpole's gone. I honestly don't mind what we do once we get to the... Ow! What the... Oh no! Oh God! Well, it was... it was nice when it lasted! Ah! I, I'm sorry! I, I have to go! It seems that's the end of Astarian's love affair with the sun. That'll be hard on him. We did it, soldier. The city's going to be all right. And so are you. Uh, engine's finally cooked. <laughs> Held on just long enough. So, how'd I do? So are you, my friend, my companion. I adore you. <sighs> Careful! Hot! I never gave up. I did my best. I did my best. Oh, that's the one thing I can't beat, isn't it? I wanted to live in my city with my friends. But life is for the living. And I saw... God! <sighs> Goodbye, son. Goodbye, sea. Goodbye. No, stop. I won't allow this. Karlak, you're coming with me. Back to Avernus. We can't let her die. Not like this. Not now. You can't! So, what do you say? Die here now, or live on with the blade of Avernus at your side. Zariel won't touch you. I swear it, Karlak. Fine. I'll go. Well, with you. But we have to go! Now! Can't hang on much longer. <laughs> it's over, and it's all because of you. You, who were destined to become a thrall. 
Thanks to you, there will be no illithid empire, no death god's tyranny. You have earned your place amongst the legends of the Sword Coast. You are the saviors of Baldur's Gate. Hello, darling. I was just thinking about... Freedom. We've dealt with the parasite, and you dealt with Casador. I'll never be in someone's power again. And all it cost was my life in the sun. <laughs> Now I belong to the shadows. So, what happens next? You... Do you think it's possible? I suppose there is a chance. And if there's a chance, no matter how small, I'm going to take it. And it would mean setting off on another adventure together. Is that what you want? Is this what you want? I would understand if you wanted to go your own way. <sighs> Good. Because, selfless as I am, I really did not want to let you go. We are rather excellent together, you know. And united. There is nothing we can't do. I can't say what the future holds for us, but I know we'll be facing it together. And we're going to have a lot of fun. Well, soldier, here we are. It worked. My engines calmed down. I shouldn't have let you come here. This isn't going to be easy, you know. Zariel's going to come at us with everything she's got. Gods, like clockwork. They'll be on us soon, but there's just enough time. <laughs> Thought I was done with these. But then, there was you. Imps are fast, but careless. Don't let them tire you out. Just get rid of them. And don't forget... <sighs> you asked for this. Better let these fuckers know I'm back. And this time, I'm not alone. Since the Netherbrain fell, you and Astarian have seen more of Faerun than you ever thought possible. One night, he tells you that these last six months of happy memories are the counterweight to 200 years of misery. The next day, you receive an invitation written in a frail hand, inviting you to a gathering back in the place where your journey together began. A chance to meet with the friends and allies who were by your side 
in the battle against the absolute. Thou wert called here, some from above, some below. For with thine bond, together thou hast kept the wheel of fate spinning when it threatened to halt. Though thou wert drawn far apart in the months after the collapse of the Absolute, tonight fate renews thy bond once more Thou shouldst take care to preserve it. It is a great weapon wielded in the hand of good. Go. Know one another once more. Starting to wonder if you'd show up. Honestly, so have I. Oh, come here, will you? It's been forever. Hmm. You feel a little more substantial than before. Less camping and scrounging off the land, I take it. Same. In fact, I found a nice meadow not far from where I live now. Every now and again, I'll spend the night there. For old time's sake. I'm glad you seem well. Trudy. I had no doubt. But I'm glad to hear you say it all the same. Wandering, mostly. The adventuring life is almost a tonic when you're not constantly threatened by brain monsters and cultists. I can finally see the world beyond the cloister. One of my first stops was the House of the Moon in Waterdeep. It's the largest temple of Saluna in existence. It seemed like the perfect spot to reflect on my parents, on where they came from. And... Where I came from, too, I suppose. Hard to imagine, isn't it? Me, of all people, in the lair of the Moon Witch herself. Gods, your truest act of heroism was putting up with all that char and drivel I was spouting for so long. Oh, I know they are. I can still sense them, I think. And one day we'll be reunited. Well, I've had run-ins with my former fellow Sharons on a couple of occasions. Word seems to have spread of what happened at the Cloister. Now other chapters of Shah worshippers see me as a prime target to offer up to their lady as a sacrifice. Don't worry. I know their tired old tricks better than anyone. They'll need more than a hooded cloak and poison blade to best me. Especially when I have a friend on the inside keeping me abreast of their predictable little plans. None other. The matter of her faith and allegiances remains... complicated, let's say. But she is still my oldest friend. I have hopes that perhaps she might turn from Shah entirely given time. But that's a decision she will have to make for herself. If that day comes, I'll be ready. I don't know. Which is just the way I like it just now. Perhaps I'll just stick a pin in a map and see what I find, or head to the docks in the morning and scrounge a berth to find somewhere new. I'd like to see the islands, maybe, or, or head south to Arm. I heard there's an enclave of werecats that hunt the followers of dark gods by moonlight. I'd love to see if there's any truth to that, but 
Enough about me. What have you been up to? Do you ever rest? Think of all those poor, budding adventurers looking to make a name for themselves. Take some time off and give them a chance, why don't you? Hopefully, these meetups will become a regular occurrence. It's not that I miss the tadpoles, but at least it brought us together. Now we've got to make the extra effort ourselves. I'm sure we will, but let's be proactive about it all the same. We're more than capable. After all, we've faced down bigger threats than wrangling together a few social calendars. Don't be a stranger. Friend? Friend! You came! Big Brother Scratch, too! Happy! Yes! Big! But Scratch is smart. Teaches me many things. Like Big Brother. Widders? No! You smell very delicious. Follow smell, find you! Lots! Make friends with a turtle, a cat, a kraken! Kraken eats my cat friend, so I bite, kill! With shiny clothes, I am strong. Tired now? Want sleep? Want cave? Bear man? Hmm. He is big, but not bigger than me. I like him. I go to him. A familiar sight. Scratch can't quite speak around the thing he has in his mouth. I found this. It smelled like you, so I kept it. Seemed like something you might like to throw. Oh, I've been so good. I've got a nice home in the city now. A girl named Mindy says I'm her best friend. She's mine too. Also you and Albert. I've got so many best friends, I hardly know who to play with. I certainly have, and I always will. Forever, I think. And so will you. You know best. But a little fetch never hurt anyone, as far as I know. I've missed wine. Had to resort to making my own cider recently, which isn't bad, don't get me wrong. But a girl can't have fun with apples alone. <laughs> you might be onto something there, though the name might need work. Somehow it sounds rude, even though I know otherwise. Well, well. Look what the Tressim dragged in. Professor Gail Decarius of Blackstaff Academy. Educator of the esteemed School of Illusion. A pleasure to remake your acquaintance. I did offer, as a matter of fact. However, the Blackstaff insisted I couldn't teach every subject nor could the simulacra of myself I offered to create for that purpose. So I've settled for teaching the art of illusion, magic to confound the senses, to render the impossible into reality, and to allow expression of that most magical attribute of all, imagination. I fear my students find me somewhat intimidating due to my uh, explosive former reputation. I seem to put the fear of the gods into them. Or the fear of Mistra, to be more specific. I surrendered the crown of Carsus to her, as I told you I would. And in return, she cured me of the orb at last. Even now, I struggle to put the feelings into words. It was like... Exhaling for the first time after holding my breath for so very long. Of course, I haven't clarified with my students that the orb is no longer a threat. The legend of my explosive capabilities is an excellent means of controlling a classroom. Too good, if anything. 
I spend most of my time trying to convince them how much fun the study of magic can be. But it'd be easier to crack a smile on an intellect devourer than some of my pupils. Ah, so you still remember our little lesson. It was at that moment, the weave connecting us, that I realized how much your friendship had come to mean to me. As it still does. You were, of course, indulging me in submitting to such a lesson. Teaching you was hardly an effort at all. Not like my present cohort of apprentices. Oh, they try their best, of course, when they can manage to stay awake. And what of you? What are you making of this newfound lease of life we earned? From you, I'd expect nothing less. I've told my students plenty of tales about our escapades. You're something of a hero to them, you know? I'd be delighted to introduce you to my current cohort as a guest lecturer, perhaps. I'm sure they'd have plenty of questions for you. Well, I for one can't wait. And I say with some confidence, Neither can they. Of course, you'll be most welcome to stay with me in my tower. It will give us plenty of time to catch up on your adventures. I'm very curious to know what you've been up to these past months. But I suspect the telling of that tale would keep you tied to me all evening. So, in the spirit of selflessness, I encourage you to mix and mingle for now. With time enough to come. Well, now... You can make yourself presentable when you have a mind to. Ha ha ha! Ah, how nice to be understood again. I have spent the past months bickering with builders and bankers, all to restore the city exactly as it was. Same twisting alleys for purse pickers. Same wooden buildings ready to get burnt by next year's dragon. Same cisterns overflowing. Huh. Ah, the upper city has been almost entirely rebuilt. That's where the gold is. Even the builder's scaffolds are cleared from the streets. No dust left to sneeze at. Baldorians simply get on with it. <laughs> Stubbornness, civic spirit, plain stupidity. Perhaps all three, but nothing I will sniff at any longer. Harpers have come from half the world over to lend aid. Farmers, masons, healers. My own son, Jord, has been wooed to their ranks. Already he plans crop cycles in Worms Crossing. Not so for my daughter. Ryan's rejoined the Flaming Fist. Temporarily, you understand. To organize the craftsmen. Though she spends more time locking up comrades for pocketing eight funds. <sighs> they might learn a thing or two if they don't expel her. Again. Honestly? Much more sitting down than I'd like. Mistake me not. There is still much to be done. Plans to make, maps to be frowned over. But my children are more than capable of doing it. Even the young ones tire of me peeking over their shoulders. This night offers them a brief respite from me at least. And this place, now I look at it, it is where you all spent your first night together, no? A fine spot for an adventure to begin. A fine spot indeed. Of course I am. Perhaps just... the long way around. It would be good to stretch my legs for a bit. I'll find my way back. As I always do. I admit defeat. Baldur's Gate is my home. But that is the thing about home. 
The only way to see it clearly is to leave. And look back. For a little while, at least. For all your travels, I hope you have arrived where you want to be. Home. Whatever that means to you. Ah, oh, sentiment. With the greatest affection, I can think of better ways to sour our stomachs. I must inspect the refreshments. You'll never know. Some ne'er-do-well might have tampered with the wine. Ah, my dear friend, it's been an age, has it not? You're looking very well indeed. Our skeletal friend will be very pleased to see I found my way here, despite my invitation getting lost in the post. Busy as ever. Better that than the reverse, wouldn't you say? Every major publishing house on the Sword Coast has been vying for my upcoming book on the subject of our adventures together. I've gotten quite good at replicating your signature, so you needn't even bother with the release form. You might help me with the title, though. I'm considering the hero and me. What do you think? I, me, it's all Volo as far as I'm concerned. Perhaps, once the manuscript is finished, you'd even be willing to write a foreword? Or better yet, I'd write a draft and you could just sign your name. Better still, I'll sign it for you, hmm? Ah, your success really has been wonderful for my reputation. But you mustn't let me hog your attention all night, my friend. You've many friends to chat to, and I'd love to listen in. You would think someone of my vintage would be inured to the passage of time. Yet these past six months have seemed endless without your company. But now our paths cross once more. We have all pined for each other's company, I sense. I cannot imagine otherwise, after what we shared. That bond was forged in a crucible that can never be stoked again, Oak Father willing. It is a bond that can weather any distance, any passage of time. I know it can, for I feel the longing for old friends in my heart each day. I always do. Should I ever decline, Assume a doppelganger has taken my place. <sighs> that was more than worth the wait. Rest assured. My arms shall be ready. Now, we have much to catch up on. Do not allow me to ramble on. I am eager to hear all you've been doing. In that case, very well. Our community grows rapidly. In six months, we have turned what was once a shadowy wasteland into a true home for all. In another six months, I would wager the scars of the past will be entirely invisible, even to those who remember them. The old masonry of Moonrise Towers and Rythwin have been repurposed into new homes, and the land is rich with harvests and bountiful trees. Nature and civilization are in harmony, stronger together. In a manner of speaking, yes. Though it is a more complex, evolving beast than I could ever have anticipated, true balance is no simple, fixed thing. Hm. I see that now. We welcome folk from all walks of life. Anyone who wishes for a new start. Naturally, it can be chaotic at times, but it is a thrilling sort of chaos. It thrives in ways I could never have dreamed of. You are welcome whenever you like, 
and for however long you please. Now, please, tell me all, and spare no details. I shall not lie. I have an ulterior motive in wishing to hear all. It is the children, you see. My charges. Their appetite for bedtime tales is greater than I could ever have anticipated. Another story, Daddy Halsin. Another is the chorus that greets me each nightfall. They have all but exhausted my repertoire in but a few short months. No mean feat to give them the lifetime I have lived. I desperately need new material, please. My reputation is at stake. Ha! You would ask to be tucked in next. But whatever the intrepid adventurer needed, I would have been glad to provide. <laughs> More than a few, I should think. At least I shall be equipped to explain the birds and the bees when the time comes. But I hope that time is quite a while off yet. I am all ears. Though I never cared for that phrase. A rather... Unsettling image. <laughs> you have kept yourself busy. I expected no less in truth. I shall be able to keep the children enthralled for a few more nights yet, thanks to you. And should you wish to retell of your exploits in person, well, I shall not object to a night off. Now, it would be cruel of me to hoard you all to myself for the evening. As much as I would like to. I shall leave you to the others for now. Unless there was anything else. I spend half my days in ursine form. The children demand it. I had a score of them taking turns riding upon my back just days ago. <sighs> I'm glad they are so comfortable with the Oak Father's creations. But they must learn that... Not all are as amiable as I am. A lesson for another time, though. They deserve some joy. As for roaming, that impulse has dwindled, I must admit. Perhaps because I have found where I am meant to be. <laughs> Quite often, they come and go as they please. But with so many playmates to avail of, they are far from strangers. They ask after you often. What you did for them will never be forgotten. I can see it in the land all around me. But more importantly, I see it in their faces whenever they visit. To make a child smile is to dabble with the power of gods as far as I'm concerned. As did I, but somehow I feel like I no longer need to roam. That I have found something worthy laying roots for. Amazing what can be discovered about oneself, even at a ripe old age. On occasion, but I prefer not to interfere. Francesca of the High Forest is Archdruid now, and by all accounts, she has proven to be a steady and wise influence. Even Korga may yet find true balance, thanks to her influence. <laughs> Do you truly even need to ask? Of course! Who could not open their home to a befeathered hero of Baldur's Gate? Ah, and I did promise the children I would bring them back a surprise. Oh, imagine their faces. <laughs> uh, before you go, I have something for you. Just a little keepsake, really. Do you remember how I told you I like to whittle? Well, I made this. <laughs> Ducks are my favorite, but I thought they were particularly fitting in this case. They are migratory birds, of course, traveling far and wide with the turn of the seasons. Yet, they always find their way back to where they belong. <laughs> Just like old friends find themselves back in each other's company. 
Just a token to remember me by. Now, I've taken up enough of your time. Go on. Enjoy the festivities. We can speak again later. Oh, right. You. Hello. Yes, I'm certain it is. As for you, well, I've heard congratulations are in order. You helped Mr. Dakario save Baldur's Gate from the Absolute, isn't that right? Well done. Despite my old friend's genius, he'd have blown himself up long ago if not for the help of friends like you and I. You ought to come visit myself and Gail when you're able. If you can extract yourself from what I'm sure are very important responsibilities. We'll send word by pigeon when we've need of you. I used to have a taste for them, but a great many things have changed in recent months. Ta-ta, darling. For two months I trained the knights of the comet. For two more, I skewered Kithraki bellies. And for two more yet, I traveled through limbo. I never imagined we'd be standing toe to toe on this day, in this place. Nothing but allies, I always told myself. A necessary partnership. But in spite of every strained word, every barbed glance, seeing you brings me even more pleasure than Taking a Royal Inquisitor's head. It's nice to hear it. It's taken a dozen gishes talents, a few stolen psi crystals, and two ten days of effort to conjure my projection. Worth it, I'd say. I miss this place. This... Uh, Fey run. Shrek to law. I wouldn't expect you to. The capital city of the Githzerai. An exiled people, once kin with mine, until the madness of civil war ripped our one sky into two. Our Gish sent word of the rebellion to their god king Zareth Minyaragith through the cosmos. He's agreed to parley. It's fallen to me to secure an alliance. Exactly the reaction I expected. My blade is keen as ever. But it was you who showed me that a proper victory doesn't always require a razor-sharp edge. Sometimes, a sincere plea is more persuasive than a dagger against the neck. Minyara Gith is an ascetic. He reached out in good faith. This is his way. It is in this spirit that I must meet him. And if he refuses, I carry on. Gravity pulls me in but one direction. I am the Comet. I will not rest until I burn Vlacket's bones to ash and smash her phylactery to pieces. My people will be free. Chuck. But you've heard that refrain before. Zealous, bossy, insistent. All part and parcel of my undeniable charm. Soon, when the comet has risen, when the Lich Queen has crumbled to dust, I miss this place. More to the point, I miss you. I wouldn't even deny it with Vlacket's vocal blade at my neck. Though, I'd rather it not come to that. Now go. Mingle a bit. That's the word, right? Mingle. I'll be back one day. The Overgod himself couldn't keep me away. So it has. And a fine man the Hatchling will be. I call him San. Freedom. He is with the mages of Zamvardim. I trust his care to no one else. Zan's destiny will be his own to follow. Warrior, poet, explorer, scholar. His way will be the way of the comet. 
No chains to bind us. No lies to bury us. Liberty will be the rallying cry that unites our empire. And? How have our friends fared without us? I'm glad. It would be so easy to go through everything we did and come out the other side bitter and twisted. <laughs> but they deserve happiness. We all do. And I will forever be grateful to have found it with you. I do feel a little bad keeping you all to myself. After all, I get to see you every night. Go on, go mingle. Enjoy your time with the others. Bless them with your presence. I'll be here when you're ready. I'll always be here, my love. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. He wasn't kidding. With us, you mad bastard, you brought me back! Soldier, it's really you. I've missed you, man. Like, I've really missed you. And you're so clean. <laughs> I'd say so. Can't think of who's been carrying your pack now that Kay's out of commission. Man, we had some good times. Wish Will and I had more time to reminisce, but surviving Avernus is just non-stop. Still, having him there has been incredible. <laughs> you really can get through anything with someone you love at your side. Oh, but hey, guess what we found? Cambion dropped a map with directions and blueprints for Zariel's own private forge. A fucking forge! Our current plan is to get in, grab a smith and force him to fix old Rusty. Or maybe give me a brand new model that can live outside of Ernest. You haven't seen the last of old Karlak yet, soldier. Trying not to count my owlbears before they've hatched, but the thought of coming back to Baldur's Gate keeps me going. Can I look you up when I'm out? Hey, that would be kind of fun, though. High stakes hide and seek. <laughs> Honestly, I'd be curious to see if you could land a blow or two. Gods, is it good to see you again. To be here, together. Hard not to get used to it all over again. This won't be the last time. I promise. There you are, my friend. Breathe deep. Can you smell it? You take in every scent the night breeze carries. Sweet honeysuckle, tender violets and an earthy fragrance you can't quite recognize. Forest trees draped in moss, bittersweet, smoky, and that faintest hint of vanilla. A far cry from the rancid of earnest heat that's been clogging my lungs. I swear, Karlak and I have felled enough Cambians to build a fortress with their horns. Who'd have thought that just one of those fiends held the key to escaping Avernus for good? One of them sported a map and some blueprints. If you want all the gory details, Karlak can fill you in. I think the splinters I made out of the last bone devil I saw speak for themselves. Not to pat myself too hard on the back, but I'm not such a bad ranger if I do say so myself. I've missed you too. The rush of battles we fought, the heart to hearts, the nights around the fire, the comfort of knowing I didn't face the unknown alone. If I had to do it all over again, and I'd rather not, to be clear, I can't imagine not having you at my side. I've seen him more than a few times, and he's as proud of me as I am of him. He's leading the city's renewal, opened the gates to all newcomers, rebuilt the council from scratch. And he's back in his element, commanding the flaming fist with brave heart, 
and no shortage of empathy. The likes of Gortash can bend people's minds with a few chosen words. No tadpole needed. Bane's chosen primed the fist for a war they weren't meant to win. He convinced them there was an assassin hiding in every shadow, that cruelty was the correct answer to crisis. With a few exceptions, fathers pardoned every last fist. If my forgiveness not be tears will, so be it. I shall forgive them all the same. His words, not mine. He still believes in the bow and the blade, but with Floric's help, he's teaching the fist a new lesson. Valor is found not in the wounds you inflict, but in the lives that you have bettered. May they all take it to heart. Well, that's enough hell talk for the moment. The night's young. You shouldn't go wasting it. Or wasting any of the wine, for that matter. I plan on downing half a bottle myself. Oh, did I say half a bottle? I meant half a dozen. Ah, breathe deep, boo! The smell of heroes sings from every stone in this place. Ah, to meet again where your journey began, my friend. An honor. For Minsk and his hamster both. Oh, and for Happy also. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, honored, of course. <laughs> See how your very presence snatches the breath from his chest? And it is no wonder. It is just this day that Happy learned of your legend, while we gazed down upon the very city you saved. He dangled me from the high hall, upside down, for two hours. Eh, the guild should not go creeping in high places if they do not have the stomach for them, hmm? It is well for Happy the strange portal appeared when it did. Minsk's arm was growing aching. So I have, though it is a piece made more from blade and boot than it is any sense of brotherhood. Nine fingers forbade any looting of the Illithid's fleshy vessels, and so Minsk guards what remains of the battle site, even from her. But where Minsk might once have thrown any sneaking scoundrels from the tower top, now I tell them of you, how you ruled the wickedness within. How they might do the same. Yes, yes, I'll rule it. I'll be better. No, oh, of course. It is still for Boo to decide if they live or die. Oh, oh, God. But enough, my friend. I cannot tell your tale if I do not know the whole of it. Minsk and Boo would know where you have been, what you have done. A powerful pairing. If love cannot cure a vampire, what can? Oh, Boo suggests a variety of arcane remedies. But love, love is the most potent and by far the easiest to pronounce. Now, halfling, Boo will not have you embarrassing him in front of his friends. So you are to know the rest of the company you keep. Will Ravenguard, the Blade of Frontiers, Devil Horned and Angel Hearted. Lazel of Cress Killer, true child of Gith and true friend to Boo. Though she will and say it is not so. Astarian, who is banished by the sun itself for fear his spawnish soul might outshine it. We visit him much down in the dark places, though he often moves his lair without remembering to tell Min Square. Gale, the man who would be a god, but then thought better of it. Boo thinks better of him for it too. Shadowheart, two gods tugged at her soul, but she managed to keep it all for herself in the end. Wait, Boo, did, did she do something with her hair? Halsin, archdruid of archers somewhere. He is a much better man than he smells. And there, the champion of the hells herself, K 
Carlock Demon's Bane, Devil's Bane, Merkel Ball and Bane Bane. Once the guild is made of good nymphs once more, Bull shall scratch the hells wide open and find a way to bring her back. And finally, Jahira. If this is a name you do not already know, then not even Boo can save you. Study them well, sneak thief, for the best among them will be a guide for your guild. Heroes who put the city before themselves, who never falter in their duty, and more than this, who never arrive to a party without even a gift for the host. But wait! Go, my friend, be among our friends. There is much work yet to be done before this one is fit to join them. He's going to kill me, isn't he? Not the big mad bastard, the hamster. Oh, hello. Let me guess, you've got some suggestions about the music choice. You... You've no idea who I am. <sighs> Withers couldn't even find a bard that knows who I am. I owe him a favor, one he is eternally invoking. I thought honoring the worthy was a fair price to pay for Withers to pull me out of the fugue plane. Alas, one purgatory to another. Languishing in obscurity. Sirik knew what he was doing when he punished me for that song, the prick. Before I was banished to the fugue plane, I had song prayers coming out the proverbial ears. Guess how many I get now? None. You feel a pang of divine guilt. Musical prayers went out of fashion among bards when Melil, Lord of Song, offended the god Syric and was ejected from the Pantheon. I'm washed up, I'm afraid. You... You know? <laughs> You're bloody right! It is an honour! Deep down, I knew you'd recognize me. You're a fellow bard, after all. <laughs> what can I do you for? Fantastical news. Carry on, I shall. This one night is like any other, and yet different. Thou art the savior of Boulder's Gate. Until such time it requires saving again. How dost thou feel? If thou could only see the paths of fate untaken, thy mind would surely break. Be glad of thy chosen path. It is, after all, Fine. Enjoy the revelry of the day. Thou deservest at least that much. What indeed? Prick up thy ears and listen. The balance of the world restored. The balance of these lives, mortal and otherwise, brought to account. Hear me, thou heroes, wastrels, friends. I have waited long to tell you these words. It is over. For now. Thou played thy part in weaving the fabric of fate itself, but for every thread you sewed, so did the gods unravel another. 
sleep, rest, revel, but be ready, for thou mayst yet be needed. Until we meet again, I wish thee every possible fortune, health, wealth, love, and above all, problems worth solving. To you. <laughs> there thou art, the dead three. Thy faces, gods, thy actions barely worthy of the name. Didst truly believe thy ploy would succeed? Didst believe I would not notice? Thou sought to bolster thy strength by taking away the souls of mortals. But souls vanish when their hosts become mind flayers. Didst think the other gods would not notice? Gods thou may be. Yet thou hast proven thyself fools, everyone. The supplication of Bane, the whimper of Baal, the death mule of Merkel, felled by mortals. I overestimated thee. They did not. Vermin? Away. Thou wilt trouble us no more.